Welcome back to Gatekeeper Media's coverage of the 2023 Music City Open, presented by Lone Star Disc. I'm Andrew Fish, joined here by Nathan Queen. What a plethora of different things we got to see on that front nine today. Uh, first seven holes averaged over par, uh, 15 to 20 mile an hour gusts. Pretty brutal, I'll say. Yeah, sloppy conditions. Uh, but we saw some we got we saw some chaos. We saw some good putts. We saw some great saves. Um, Adam Hammes got himself into the top ten with two under par. Got some folks uh, over par with some work to do on this back. But the back is a lot more scorable. Yes, the back is where you've got to get some work done if you're going to give yourself a chance. And right into it on hole ten. Yeah. Hole 10, 354 feet. It's a par three. Uh, biggest obstacle is this gap and then an elevated basket. Uh, the right side is out of bounds. Uh, the left side plays as casual, but boy, you don't want to be over there. Adam Hammes actually going up kind of over top of the gap here. Gets plenty of distance on it. Actually, too much. Goes about 380. Going to be circle's edge long. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen anybody get long on this hole yet in practice or tournament. That is the first I've seen. Emerson, a lot more traditional gap shot. This is gorgeous. Drifting, drifting, drifting. Oh, and do it. Out. Oh, and just absolutely pins it what a shot from Emerson Macbeth I think this is an Athena he also hits the gap nicely doesn't quite get the same uh, late drift but I mean easy pickings he might get himself on the board we saw him unable to get to circle one or card a birdie on the entire front I'm, I'm going to call it and say he'll make that. That looked to be just outside the bullseye. I think that should give him his birdie. This is looking in danger of going OB, though. Oh, does stay in bounds over there. Kind of in a, a bit of a tricky spot, though. Tough to make that one. Wow. We've seen it a couple times. Yeah, that was almost identical to his result on hole nine. Yeah. Okay, and Paul back to one over. Gets him moving in the right direction. We'll see Raven for his comeback putt. We are getting to those under par holes now. This one averaging at a 2.27, the third easiest on the day. Uh, just seven players taking a bogey, so lots of pars. And 33 players with the birdie. Into hole 11, what is the easiest hole on the course? 270 feet, one of the original holes. And I hope they keep it that way, or at least keep this green as uh, it's kind of a spot I feel like you just want to hang out at. Yeah, really pretty. Like, ideal benches just for sitting, having a picnic, or getting caught at early circle one. And oh, wild reaction for Emerson. He does get onto the shelf, but then a crazy roll to the right. A little bit of a left to right crosswind, maybe some tail. Paul leaves it too high. I think the idea here is to play something that's moving with that left to right, but underneath the branches. If you get caught at 25 feet, you just trust yourself that you're an elite player. You're going to make the putt, um, but you don't want to be. You don't want to just be spiking into the trees. Yeah, this one can be a little tricky to get onto the green if you don't hit that gap just right. If you throw too fast, 
and you do hit the rocks just right, you can skip way <laughs> on past it also and end up without a putt back there in the trees. This is pretty well driven by Raven, but does find a tree in the gap. Yeah, so that knocks you down to usually about 38 or 40 feet. Paul Macbeth got a taste of birdie on the last hole and did not have enough. Yeah, look at the velocity on that as it's coming in. Yeah. That's, back, a, that's a dedicated putt. Dedicated. Had to reach to the left of those trees there. Put a little bit of ante on it. Didn't show in the flight, but necessary off of the wrist. Raven looking for his first bird. And heartbreaker. Chains out right. Yeah. Strong side. And Adam's head was down before that even got to the basket. Not a great bid. Emerson, pretty mean roll away that he got. Not able to capitalize on the birdie. Just one birdie on our card here, but 68 players taking the birdie and a strange stat that you rarely see <laughs> zero bogeys on this hole today i i like that circle two in regulation stat as well yeah 98 percent made it to circle two that's pretty silly hole 12 we're gonna go up 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 you gotta go through a gap and navigate your way to the left not a whole lot of out of bounds here except for this pond that's short right of the green the biggest thing here is Put it in play. I know that sounds reductive, but it's a favorable win on the second shot. Mm. And yeah, that's a, a mistake you can't really make if you want to take the birdie here. Just get it right of that tree and let it fade. Seemed like a little hesitation in Paul's footwork there. Heath looking to correct. I don't love that he's running from back right to front left. That kind of puts it offline, I think. I agree. It makes it kind of seem like you have to throw a turnover shot to get away from that tree. As, as Adam's kind of starting back to left here. Oh, and... We're three for three, and not in a good way. Comes out early also. It's pretty surprising. There's a left to right wind. And I, I think it's just making all these players feel like they have to push it as close to that tree as possible mm -hmm. to try to stay out of the woods on the right. But clearly, they have all pushed it too close to that tree. And we're going to see four par scrambles here, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. This is a hole that you don't want to get behind on. It's, it's going to play relatively easy as the par fours on this course do or as as they go on this course Macbeth with a good second shot that's going to give him a pretty easy approach into the green and I, I guess Nathan they're trying to hug this tree as we see uh, the tree hugging Adam more or less they're trying to hug that so they can work their way out to the left and make the angle into the green more favorable And three, three good shots so far. Got one left. Try to see if he can gain some distance and have an easy up and down for the par. That's just spectator rope to the left. Raven had actually kicked forward more than everybody else and is able to take oh, yeah. advantage. What a shot. Maybe even gave himself a long birdie look. Couldn't tell if he quite made it around those branches or not. Nathan, you've played with Raven a good bit. You can see that he's just a big goofball based on the reaction to that shot. Oh, he never stops being a goofball. <laughs> um, I, I think this is a good opportunity to plug Gatekeeper Unplugged uh, because Raven is going to be doing his own commentary after every shot, pretty much. Uh, you won't have to listen to us nearly as much. And Emerson up nice and around the corner. Oh, this looks like, uh, I think, a wasp, baseline wasp. 
interesting choice, but he'll be up there. Kind of no harm, no foul for his par attempt. Oh, and not quite able to connect on what would have been a hero birdie and the first of the round for him. But looking to have, oh, well, three pars and a bogey here as Emerson just a bit right side there. This is a really solid par four. I feel like it could fit on any course. Good mix of like the gap shot, the blind turnover, the uphill. Hole 13, 616 foot par three. Pretty significant uphill shot here. You've got about 290 feet before you get to that gap. Gonna play around 330 or so. If you can throw a forehand flex shot through that gap, you're gonna be happy and out in a wide open field uh, looking at the basket. But distance control is difficult on this hole as it slopes down and right behind it a uh, tree line comes up quickly. There's also, as you see, Paul showing you here a high shot over the top of this tree line, which uh, is just silly, but there's so many people that can do it now. It's a viable play. Yeah, the skies are open, and I feel like this is a very favorable win for the shot, kind of coming off the left shoulder. In, in a different wind, this is a trap. Like, this is trying to trap power players into making a bad decision. Um, a lot of the front nine is like that, where in order to get a birdie, you have to introduce a lot of risk to your play. And this back has a little bit more favorable wind uh, direction today. Therefore, it makes that over-the-top shot more attainable. And Raven trying to go with that flex shot, but looks like he kind of overcooked it. Yeah, waves goodbye to that pyro. He will have a backhand hyzer through the gap. And Keith going to try to follow the example and go over the top. This does not quite have the height on it, and he does not get a favorable kick either. Kicks him down to the right, and he's looking to go back over top again now Patton pending gonna try to go 50 feet in the air immediately gets it good glide out of it that entire field is just completely safe leaves him about 220 into the green so Raven looks like he pushed a little bit too far left of that gap and is just going to also go with a big hyzer over the top, or big flex shot over the top. Crashes some spectators over at the FPO pin. Should have a nice, easy pitch up for the par from there. And the reward for biting off so much on the first shot for Hamas is this zone approach. Yeah, if, you, if you're not as far as him... Like I was saying on the flyover, this is a pretty difficult green to get your distance right on. You've got those two guardian trees on each side that Paul is flying straight into, and they are very hard to get out of. Yeah, his disc kind of got Audrey Tude there. He's going to have to work to get up and down for a four. And as soon as you get some glide on your putter... Yeah, look how slow he threw that. You end up in the tree line long. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't know Emerson was going long, but it's just so common. <laughs> it's so common on this hole. As soon as you catch any type of glide, it's gone. Kind of an aggressive bid from Raven. Still looking for that elusive first birdie. And look at Paul. Yeah. He, slowly trickling out. He hunted for any option he could find. Yeah. Oh, would have been a great putt to save the par from Emerson. 
I should note, Emerson was actually pretty close to a barbed wire fence, and that resulted in uh, about the sixth question to one of the PDGA marshals. Uh, a couple of these players mentioned that their flow was a little bit difficult to get into because they kept having to be in situations where they'd have to figure out how to apply a particular rule. And they did it correctly, but it, it just meant that they had to take that little bit of time and energy not playing. Yeah, it definitely can disrupt you having to do things like that as Adam Hammes moves to three under. Adam Hammes here. If you want to support me directly, go to teamdiscraft.com. I got hoodies, shirts, all kinds of cool discs on there. Um, and check out everyone on Team Discraft. We've got the whole elite team. Every player has their own little merch site. So uh, be sure to check that out. Thank you. Hole 14, 375 feet as a par 3. Spiritually kind of similar to hole 9, where there's the left hand, uh, the left route for a right hand forehand. Uh, but this right hand tunnel is almost impossible to work with. Out of bounds barbed wire fence to the right, uh, as well as uh, pretty, pretty grabby tree line. I would say the right side is pretty much just a sucker gap. There's not a, you know, that's something that you do in a practice round with your buddies. You're like, man, let me throw this shot down this, yeah, look how down this I tunnel am. on the right. Uh, not something you really want to try to pull off in the tournament when that OB is so close and going to be so easy to get into. Um, unlike hole nine, you kind there's, there's a low shot and a medium height shot. Paul going for the low shot here does get underneath the branches, but doesn't quite have enough turnover on it. The medium height shot is this shot, which goes around those branches. Paul just got underneath and fights back nicely, putting Raven with an opportunity for his first birdie of the round. Emerson to that backhand. Uh, I wish I had a forehand. And you hear it there, I wish I had a forehand. It's just not comfortable throwing that long distance shot right now. Yeah, it's it's difficult to be out here trying to compete against the best in the world when you don't have all of your shots and when you don't have everything that you want to be able to do. It's um, not only does it make it more physically demanding, but mentally demanding as well, because in the past you have been able to do that. Yeah, and that's something you've kind of been dealing with as you rehab from injury. Um, any, like, one word or one sentence of advice to Emerson? <laughs> nope, today was pretty brutal. <laughs> <laughs> and he skips off the top of the basket nearly... The, the highlight birdie of the round. Paul with a great par save. That's a, that's two in a row that's kept his round going. Yeah, much cleaner putt on that one than the last one, even though it was <laughs> farther. Uh, but absolutely, like you said, kept his round going. He's still at even par. Uh, Adam Hammes also able to get his par there. Yeah, a little bit of weird balance there as he was very... It's maybe concerned about the mud. And because of the barbed wire, two meters of relief was allowed on this hole. Therefore, Emerson gets the benefit of a pretty short par cleanup here. It does clean it up nicely. Raven now going to have that opportunity get his first birdie of the day but he's over there being a goofball yeah he's going to be talking to somebody <laughs> I guarantee you that and there it is <laughs> he knows it too throws it up alright finally got the birdie Brings us into hole 15. 
as a lefty, my least favorite hole on the course. No comparison. Um, 777 feet. OB all the way down the right side. Might as well be OB on the left side. Because if you get in the rough, you're going to be just pitching out. Uh, kind of have a left to right slight headwind type of thing going on. And a little slippage. If you push through all the way to the other side, it's kind of open. Yeah, that... I heard I have heard of a couple lefties playing over the top deliberately. I'm gonna look into at that tomorrow. We'll see yeah, because Ham is playing with the up the middle route, and this is fading left a little early. He does get to a pretty decent spot, um, but maybe too far back to attack for three. Macbeth gonna show us a slightly different route yeah, outside Heiser. He's looking up. I didn't think we would see this with the wind that's there today, but it looks like it's maybe died down a little bit. And yeah, that does carry back to the left side almost a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. I think as the day went on, there was still wind, but and it was the same direction as the rest of the day, but the intensity kind of died down to make almost every hole more throwable. Keith with the early release. He's going to be stuck on that left side. Nothing to do but uh, try to advance a little bit. Yeah, that's very early. And he does advance a little bit. Going to be throwing again, but I'm still going to say kind of unreachable to the pin from here. Yeah, and in order to reach the pin, he's got to test all of the right side, which is out of bounds. Does well for himself. Keeps it in the fairway. Yeah. That's probably, what, 80 feet? Yeah, that sounds about right. Also, a nice shot out from Raven, who did not get clear to the other side. No. Hamas kind of packing it in here. He's know he's got a good round going. Just going to go close zone. Oh, boy. I'm sure he didn't want that cut roll, no, but still no, no, safe no. nonetheless. And once again, the skies are open for Mr. Macbeth. Sweet. He gets up there inside circle one. I believe this is a pyro for Raven. Thrown well. Just flat, 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 and then loses all of its speed oh, right yeah. at the bullseye. That's going to be in great position to save a par for him there. And same for Adam, showing great touch with that forehand. And this is the second hardest hole on the course. Honestly, this is what I thought would play as the hardest. I believe it. They stack up quick on you. And... Uh, Oh, able to card the birdie under par for the first time of the round. Yeah, what a hero to do that on this hole. Um, we saw him begin this back nine at two over par, and uh, now he's working himself into a pretty decent position with the field. One of the advantages to going out as a later card is you know what the pace is, you know... Uh, you kind of know what a good round looks like. I just think the plastic is very premium. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. It's something I can consistently trust. You're going to want to put multiple discs in your bag. You can only say so much where they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. Hole 16, an island hole, plays pretty cakey with uh, with the tailwind today, although into a headwind, much more challenging. I imagine we're going to see mostly hyzers here, although some players are going straight at the basket with a putter. Just 305 feet, uh, and you know, just see the shot, hit the shot, Nathan. Yeah, 35 feet. That's what you've got around the basket. 
Paul looked like he was going straight. Went through the straight gap, but on a hyzer, gonna be inside the circle. Uh, should be basket height also. This green slopes pretty far. Yeah, perhaps the most dangerous on the course in that regard. Yeah, I would definitely say it is the steepest. So if you land long of the pin uh, towards the edge of that inbounds area, it is a very scary putt looking down. And if you miss, 80% chance it's gonna go OB. Yeah, I definitely heard of some rollaways. Newsom gonna go forehand, and he's gonna play through the middle. This is a little bit of a techie shot with that crosswind, but executes nicely. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Once again, Gatekeeper Unplugged will be coming out next week. Uh, perhaps a must watch if you're into players commentating on their own shots. Emerson going with the hyzer off to the right side as well. Maybe catches a little bit of branch on the way by, but gonna land safely. Big downhill putt. It's a tough angle to navigate because he is putting into a headwind downhill. Yeah, and the basket, whenever you're looking down at it like that, it, it just seems smaller. I don't know if it actually is smaller. Not, not really, I think it's just but the, the angle. catch zone is, is wildly different. And Hamas gets himself to four under. Hi, my name's Raven Newsom. Uh, I'd like to thank my sponsors, MVP Disports, Lucky Ace Discs, Chains or Die, and Drive Bags, and then your favorite bartender, Michael Kirsch. And if you want to support me, go and check out their sites, check out their, their stuff. They're, they're really good people. Um, and I just want to say thank you guys so much for covering everything. Yeah, going right back over that same pond on hole 17, 355 feet. Not quite an island hole, as you could lay up short if it gets too crazy, but we're, we're not going to see any of that. Uh, but there is no inbounds on the other side, so if you don't make it across or cross inbounds over there, you're going to be throwing three from this side. Mostly a headwind, a little bit of right to left. Macbeth going with the captain's raptor, and... Just not quite enough speed to get all the way there. Is safe, but near edge of circle. Yeah, that right to left really holding it from pushing back to the right. Downhill, you feel like it's gonna move left to right pretty well, but that wind seems to be keeping them straight today. Raven pops this up a little bit. And if, if we had a heat map of where players are landing, that's like the the 0.04%, right? Yeah, inbounds <laughs> right side of the basket. <laughs> like, Paul's spot is a 45%. Adam's spot here is a 25%. And nothing 25% about how good that shot is, though. Yeah, fantastic shot. Going to have what should be a fairly easy birdie to move him to five under par for the round. Potentially, yes. Emerson going to go with the backhand. This is a much trickier shot to manage the angle with the headwind. Does cross in bounds, but ends up rolling out. Yeah, that's another time where I bet if we listened long enough, we would have heard him say, man, I wish I had a forehand. Um, yeah, almost certainly. Um, you know, we've, we've covered him before, and he's been pretty balanced in what he decides to throw off the tee or for up shots. Paul swiping once again, asking the disc to move left, and it won't. Raven Newsom all of a sudden caught a little bit of birdie fire. He's gone three under through the last four holes, moving him to three over par now. Yeah, uh, sincerely hope that the rest of the tournament we see back Raven, not front Raven. Um, and... If nothing else, he's playing with a lot of heart. 
And he still big putted Paul on the front nine. <laughs> As Adam Hammis did connect for his birdie, he is now five down in the top ten. Paul McBeth with a par and Emerson tapping in another bogey. Hole 18, 723 feet, a par four, pretty sick closing hole, and a ideal win for smashing a backhand driver today. Uh, pretty non-specific landing zone, although the further right you are, you get level with the basket. It's elevated, it's kind of in a little bowl. Uh, it's not that hard to par, but it's pretty challenging to birdie. Very difficult to get to an ideal spot off of the tee shot. You see what Raven is heading straight towards right now. If you can push just in front of that, or ideally around it long, then that's gonna put you in the best spot. But that's a pretty big smash to get long of it. And if you're anywhere in front of it, it's possible for you to fade out and be behind another set of trees over there. Or if you're Adam. This is, yeah, this is what you want push long of that by like a hundred feet and yeah. just that's amazing I, I believe I heard from the spotter that that was about the best drive all day it's gotta be yeah so he will be somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 to the bucket yeah this is more of the push of the normal push past that that group of trees yep. like past it to the Just, right side. Yeah, to the right side, not past it towards the basket. That's pretty wild. And Emerson also going to track way to the right. Nothing wrong with it. It's going to leave uh, likely a backhand into the green. And not finding a good gap. Raven's going to be forced to go to a flex forehand. This this simply can't birdie. Yeah, he is in a par play right there. Just the slope of, of what he had to deal with on his run-up is enough to kind of take him out of birdie range. It's very steep right there. It was hard to tell from the camera. Mm -hmm. Emerson trying to play a drifting shot, but uh, it's hard to hold that over at 400 feet or so. He's going to be out near circle two's edge once again. Pure layup, take four, walk off the course, and fight tomorrow yeah he's got a tailwind for that 70 footer so if he really wants it he could give it a bid up that hill but most likely like you said par paul Macbeth able to get inside the circle looking for a birdie to finish his round and ideal position oh hamas hates it he knows he's thrown it too high with the raptor yeah and i think some of the wind just caught that on the nose up there is still going to be in circle two, I think. And the new stabilizer for Raven. Does leave himself a headwind putt, but from level with the basket. Yeah, and it looks like Emerson did try to give that a bid. Wow. Why not? What a sick finish for Adam Hammes, going from three down to six down in three holes. That gets himself up to third place. In a, in a huge log jam tie yes, for yes, it. Yes, a huge tie. Yeah. But what a way to finish. A turkey, 16, 17, some birdies that you feel like you want to get. 18, definitely a great birdie to finish on. Paul McBeth able to get it as well. Didn't get under par until hole 15 inside the top 20. Yeah, five down on this back. Really well done for him. Uh, we know he's always dangerous, and he told me that he thinks double digits is out there for him. Raven, a good battle. Yeah, I could see double digits on this course from, from quite a few players. The wind drops down five, ten miles an hour for the entire round. Uh, lots of birdie opportunities out here. And Emerson, his round kind of marred by that, that tough hole three, but... Uh, Good on him for being out here, battling even through an injury. Um, once again, you see six down, three down, and then a three up and eight up for our feature card. 
Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate the Music City Open and all the volunteers and staff that are making this possible. You see, tomorrow we're going to see Nick Hansen, Anthony Barella, Austin Turner, and Adam Hamas. Should be a fun card. Always exciting for me to get to watch another lefty. I'm also excited just to be out here and playing again. Um, looking forward to the round tomorrow. For Andrew Fish, I'm Nathan Queen, and we will see you guys out there.